Welcome to our interview series, Transition Talks, Opinions on Low Carbon Transport and Future Mobility. With this series, we aim at capturing expert opinions and perspectives on how the future of transport and mobility might look like and how to decarbonize transport until mid-century. Today, we have with us Siegfried Ruprecht. Welcome, Siegfried. Hello. Siegfried, um, today we talk about Sustainable Urban Mobility Planning, mm -hmm. also known as SUMP. SUMP is a concept which helps cities to elaborate long-term oriented strategic mobility plans. You are the CEO of Ruprecht Consult and are the key author of the European Union guidelines for developing and implementing a sustainable urban mobility plan. Mm -hmm. To give our audience an idea of what the concept of SUMP is about, let me ask you three questions. Mm -hmm. Number one, Siegfried, could you tell us more about what is behind the concept of sustainable urban mobility planning, SUMP, and how does it contribute to more sustainable and climate-friendly transport and better cities? Mm -hmm. Sustainable urban mobility planning was developed in 2013 as part of the European Commission's urban mobility package. The aim was to find a methodological framework for cities to deliver on the policies that were contained in the package. Uh, and as we all know, transport is the least performing sector in the climate uh, context. So we had to develop a methodology and not only ambitious goals. Uh, and these methodologies are based on a set of clear criteria, principles. Uh, we call them the eight principles of sustainable mobility planning. They include things like a uh, plan with a goal in mind, which is sustainable, climate-friendly transport, plan for the entire functional urban area, uh, improve the cooperation of the stakeholders in, in your planning area, involve citizens, uh, create a factual basis by doing analysis, monitor the progress that you're making, and other such factors. So it is a concept which is not prescriptive about a certain policy, but which defines a way of developing policies. So there is a flexibility to adopt uh, in a certain uh, planning area. Thanks for this great insight, Siegfried. Um, the SUMP guidelines, which we also have here on our table, were recently updated in their second edition and are already published. Siegfried, can you tell us more about what is new in the second edition of the guideline mm -hmm. compared to the first edition of the SUMP guideline? In a sense, the SUMP concept has matured. Mm -hmm. So for five years, uh, cities all over Europe have worked with the first version. Um, many demands were made to add guidance here or there, to be more specific, to be more clear, and we have tried to take this up by adding, for example, new sections on the implementation. So how to procure services, how to manage the implementation process. We have clarified terminologies. We have added on the glossary. And maybe the most important thing that we have done is we have really gone a long way to contact uh, good examples, cities uh, to develop good practices, and we have included 62 of them into our guidelines. And that, I think, is a great resource, especially from a practitioner viewpoint. Of course, we also have updated the visual uh, image of the guidance. It is a much longer document. Um, and in addition, we are now looking into ways of translating it and contextualizing it into other contexts. Thanks, Siegfried. Let me um, also ask you, we have in addition to the guidelines um, here on our table, the practitioner briefing, in this case on the road vehicle automation. And we also have a topic guide here on our table on the topic of electrification. Mm -hmm. Could you um, a little bit explain us the role of these topic guides and practitioner briefings, of which mm -hmm. there are many out there, uh, uh, and their um, 
meaning for the overall guidelines mm -hmm. on SUMPs? There was a clear demand from practitioners who need to really work in a pragmatic way, who maybe are in a city where air quality is the biggest problem, to develop a sustainable air mobility plan which delivers on certain topics or which delivers a certain technology like automation um, or a city that is small and has different context conditions. So the second level after the main guideline was to find ways of providing such specific guidance which would still be compatible with the overall guidance. So uh, in the uh, platform for sustainable mobility planning, uh, we thought about ways of uh, delivering such content without having a big budget. So we created a bottom-up process where projects, organizations would come up and say, would volunteer in effect um, by providing documents which were in the line of sustainable mobility planning. And we have been very successful. We now have 17 such documents on the table which are compatible with the overall concept and which really go in depth um, in 20 pages in some cases or in 40 pages in other cases. So we really have created a great knowledge resource that everybody can use. It is free to use and it is a great resource. Thanks, Siegfried. And uh, the last question, um, given the specific conditions and characteristics of different countries and cities around the world, which includes the different types of organizations of cities, mm -hmm which includes different administrative structures, which also includes different climatic conditions, and last but not least, also different cultural backgrounds. How can the SUMP guidelines um, successfully being applied in different countries globally? Mm -hmm. In fact, we're already in this process. SUMP is being applied in Latin America, in Africa, um, in Asia. We're here in Beijing uh, while we record this interview. So there is a great interest worldwide in this principle, in, in this concept of sustainable urban mobility planning. Uh, the important thing when transferring SUMP from Europe to other contexts is uh, not to try to follow the ideal process, but to really accept the fact that in other contexts uh, compromises must be made, even in a more dramatic way, maybe, as in as in Europe where we uh, started. The important thing that we communicate now is please remember that SUMP is about S, sustainability. Secondly, remember the principles like working with a factual base, involving stakeholders, working in good cooperation with other institutions, uh, monitoring. The, so the principles are important and please be inspired. The whole SUMP is about creating a change process, a process where you have a clear direction and where you have an idea of how to reach this common goal with your community. So that is the way that we want to work with SUMP on a global level. And we shall see, maybe at some point, there will be specific guidance for certain world regions, or there will be an SUMP 3.0, we don't know, but it is a dynamic process, which I'm very grateful for. Thank you so much, Siegfried. I think overall, uh, what I understood um, is that the SUMP concept and the guidelines are very, very successful and very comprehensive tool set and a guide um, helping cities to better and more effectively align their transport, their mobility, and in the end also their overall uh, urban planning. I'm very thankful and very glad to have you here as the key expert on this topic and would like to thank you very much. And last but not least, I would also like to thank our audience. And if you would like to know more about the SUMP concept and the guidelines, please follow, li follow the link. And we hope that you will join us again for our next episode of Transition Talks opinions on low carbon transport and future mobility. Thank you.